Hello everybody, it's Becca at So Darn Twisted, as I'm sure you can tell. Uh, this is another Photoshop requested tutorial um, by Joanna, who wanted to know how to make a collage uh, background, uh, preferably a shabby chic one. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, the first thing to do is, if you're making collages, it's easier if you put your elements into different folders because you know that you're going to start out layering your backgrounds then you're going to put your sort of bigger things in you know flowers that kind of thing get the placement there and then you're going to add the little bits and pieces you know your text elements are going to go in at the same time as your frames uh, that kind of thing and then your sort of last bits will be things like the butterflies and bits of lace and you know that kind of thing so yeah it's always better to have it sort of like that really so I've gone through and I've just kind of picked out a variety of um, backgrounds that I can use to uh, to get my base going kind of thing and I think I'm going to go with this one today and possibly parts of some of the others so this really as I say is just kind of a base level thing now what I will say to you is everything that you do when you're making collages you are far better off keeping things on separate layers because it makes it easy to edit if you go in there's something you don't like but you've merged it down it's too late so the one thing with Photoshop is always always keep elements on separate layers or groups because once it's done and you see Photoshop tutorials all the time where they add this thing and they're constantly merging it down so you're always just left with this layer and that is the single worst way to work in Photoshop in my in my professional opinion that's really not a good way to work because nothing then is editable really so work on layers you've got full control even if it's just oh I want to move that thing somewhere else so everything I do will be going onto a different layer. Now I quite like the idea of having some of that lace featuring there and uh, possibly some of this one as well. So as you can see we've got a variety of, sort of colours and stuff going on at the moment as well but that's okay. Right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the portions that I want to use from the other images. There is no point dragging the entire thing across if you're only going to be using a part of it. So I'm just going to use my rectangular marquee tool here and I'm just going to drag that across. And then if I hit Command J, which I think is Control J on a Windows system, that creates a new layer for me that I can just pick up and drag across onto there. So now I'm done with that one, we'll get rid of it. And then I'll take a section from this one using the exact same method. I quite like the idea that that's got the sort of darker in the corner. So I'm just going to take a chunk of that one and again Apple J it to get it onto a new layer. And then I'll get rid of that. Then I'll go into hit the F key, will take you into this screen mode so you've still got all your tools but you haven't got an annoying border and you don't have to keep dragging out the edges to see what you're doing. So I'm going to hide that one for now. We're going to work with this one, which if I just put my move tool on to drag it around, as you can see is here. So I don't want it to be that big, so I'm going to change the size of it. Now, if the software that you're using, if it's not Photoshop, but a similar thing like Affinity or something, I don't actually know whether they automatically constrain proportions for you when changing the size of something. And what I mean by that is, if I change it, the whole thing moves, the width and the height of it. Whereas uh, if I was to hold down my shift key, it would do that. Don't do that. You don't want to do, you don't want to distort things, generally speaking. Some things you can distort, you know, a little bit's not going to matter, but you'll see people and you'll see printables and they're like that and it's just ugly don't do it <laughs> so just keep it keep it constrained on the proportions is my advice anyway so I'm just gonna pop a bit of that up there I think 
um, and then I'm just going to bring that in a little bit smaller. Okay, so now I'm happy with how that one is sitting proportionally. Now you've got some options. And this is in your blend modes here because another thing you'll see is people uh, using an eraser and, you know, just rubbing things out. I'm going to show you a better way of doing that. Uh, but the first thing to do is to decide how you want this to sit within your collage. Now, you'll see that if I move through these, you get different effects. Some don't seem to make a lot of difference at all. Others make quite a difference. Some are absolutely useless to you. So it's really just a case of just going through and seeing if there is a particular way that you would like yours to be. And like I say, some of them you really, really don't want. <laughs> but that's okay. So for this one, I'm going to put it onto lighter colour. Which if I just come out of that, you'll just see that it just kind of blends it in just a little bit better with my background. If I click off of that, you can see there. So now, what's a better way than using an eraser? Well, once you use your eraser, the part that you delete from your image is gone. That's it. Forever. So in designs, what we tend to do is we use layer masks. Um, these are obviously not something that complete beginners are usually familiar with, but they're not as scary as they sound. Because I'll show you. If I was to just click a mask on there, and it's white, anything that I do, well, it came out, it keeps coming out of my brush tool. I don't know why it's doing that. There we go. Photoshop having its lovely little glitches as usual. Okay, so there we go. That's all fine. We're going to leave that as it is. And I'm going to turn on my airbrush. Uh, okay, so yeah, if my mask is white, I'm going to use this brush tool. And I'm going to keep it on 0% hardness because I don't want an edge. And if you are familiar with using your keyboard shortcuts, you will know that your um, square brackets uh, next to your return key usually will make your brush bigger for the right one and left will make it smaller. So we're going to zoom in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the brush to... 50% opacity, but if you just hit 5, it will change it for you. Oh, it would have just changed it for me if I hadn't done that. So, <laughs> but generally speaking, if you're in the brush tool and you hit, uh, you know, sort of 3 fives, it will change it for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and just tickle around the bits that I don't really want to be on there. That hard edge, for example some of this you know sort of excess here so why is that better Becca answer me this right well I'm gonna show you so let's just tickle a bit more of that out of there get in there with a little bit of a now I'm gonna up the opacity of that now too Ooh, that's doing the flower that's because I'm on airbrush I don't know what to do it on there Flow is, flow is brilliant and has its uses for many, many things. Uh, but for the purposes of this, I just want to use the opacity. So I'm just knocking this out. As you can see, it's quick and easy to do. And you don't have to be exact because it's shabby after all. <laughs> okay, so... What I'm going to do to show why it's better to have it on a mask is, I'm going to increase my brush size. So, for example, well, imagine if I'd erased that and then moved on and done something else, yeah? So I've gone on to this layer and I've done things with this one and, uh, you know, sort of, I've put that one under there, moved it around, you know, messed with it generally kind of thing. The problem that I've got is then it's gone, but... If I go back to my layer mask and I set my brush back to white down there, I can then paint it back in. You see? So I always have that control 
if I switch it back, if you don't know, use your X key to switch between your foreground and your background colour over there. So you can go in and bring back or take out anything that you didn't want to get rid of, you see. So, and it's much easier for feathering the edges of things as well. So if I was to set my opacity sort of down between 15 and 20 and then just kind of do just brush lightly around it's just gonna you know just knock out some of that hard edge for you you can also just change the opacity of the entire layer if you click V on your move tool you can automatically adjust your opacity using your number keys so as you can see I can go down to you know like that's 50% that's 30%, that's 80%, 60%, you know, so you, you can do that and it works really well. Okay, so now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to just plunk that up there and I'm just going to leave it there. I'm going to leave the mask on in case I change my mind later. So now I'm going to go and work with this one in much the same way. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to flip this one. So if you right click, within your transform tool oh that's a point I should tell you about the transform tool in case you haven't watched the previous videos okay so if I want to change the size of something your hotkeys are apple T command T or you can go to edit and free transform which is the same thing so once you're on your free transform if you right click you can flip horizontal vertical anything that you want to do really so I think I want a bit of that up there but I do want to change the size and again I am leaving the proportions constrained so I quite like that there so then I'm going to go into that and I'm going to look at my blend modes again and see what one might work for me and I think maybe that one would be good with a lower opacity in the background there let's see yeah okay that's working so again we're going to go on the layer we're going to put a mask on it we're going to make sure that our foreground color is on black and we are going to use our brush and do exactly the same thing as before now because you're on layers whatever you're doing will only affect the layer that you are on so wonderfully it's not actually touching the uh, the layer underneath so you know that one is there completely untouched by what I'm doing over here which is what you want so I'm just gonna kind of mess a bit get rid of just a few bits and pieces here and there so that it's not quite as solid a pattern just basically just rubbing out but not permanently <laughs> and again because it's on a mask I can change my foreground colour to white and I think you know I've got rid of a bit much there you know so I'm gonna just put a little bit back in kind of thing you see wonderful and then I'm just gonna make sure that that's not showing an edge okay so that is basically the background that I want for my collage now so I'm going to leave those layers alone. I'm going to hit my F key a couple of times to bring me back here and go back to my collage folder. So now I know I'm done with my backgrounds. I am going to move on to my uh, flowers. So as you can see, I've got a lot, a lot of flower components here. So it's really just what fits with the theme, the style of what you're doing so something like that is going to fit really really nicely so we'll have that one and let's have a nice rose because that's always nice as well and what else have we got here one of these might be nice in a corner this is the thing with design though is that obviously your you know you're looking at it from a design perspective and if you don't have that sort of if you don't have that thing in your head that allows you to visualize it can be very very tricky to know what you need where to put it 
that kind of thing you know I fully appreciate that um, I'm not saying that this is incredibly easy um, obviously I can give you pointers but the rest of it you're kind of on your own <laughs> okay so I'm just going to kind of get these to a size where I can just see what I've got so I know what I want to use I don't want them all to be the same otherwise I'd just use the match zoom but that's not what I'm looking to do at this point in time okay so what have we got here let's just move that over slightly right well I know then that this one is gonna fit beautifully so I'm gonna drag that across onto my canvas that's my husband changing things in Dropbox. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay, and for now, I'm just gonna click on it with my um, with my move tool, and I'm just gonna reduce the size of it a little bit just to get it on the canvas and tuck it up there out of the way. So I know I've got that one now. Oh, I didn't apply it. That was my silly fault. Okay, see, we make mistakes. Even us designers, we make mistakes. When you do that, you have to apply it either by hitting enter. Otherwise, as soon as you click off, it'll go back to how it was. <laughs> okay, so I also know that that one is going to fit really nicely as well. Same thing, I'm going to just size it down and chuck it out of the way. And say yes, thank you very much. And then I think we should probably have something from this one. Now, because this is in two pieces and I don't actually want to keep it in two pieces, I'm going to use my L, my lasso tool, and I'm just going to draw a little box around that. So I'm just going to try cut and drag in it. Okay, so holding down my command key, cut and drag. It wouldn't create a new layer. At the moment, I should know why. I can't think. I can't think at all. So there we go. So we'll have that one in here somewhere, and I th think that one. And again, we're just going to, same thing again, move tool, reduce the size, apply it. Fabulous. All right, so I've got my floral elements. So let's F key it again to go back into the better screen mode. So I know I'm going to want that to be in a corner. So that's fab. We'll have that one up there. And again, just enter to confirm that, that that's where I want it to be. I have a feeling I'm going to want that one in the middle and, you know, quite, quite a decent size like that maybe. So I think I'll leave that one there for now. Uh, and again, this is the beauty of layers, is that I can go in and I can change things around later if I'm not happy with where I put them. Uh, that one I'm just going to rotate that I think and just bring it down into that corner and then we'll apply that and again I can get yeah, oh, the wrong layer there <laughs> that's always fun and again I can you know although I've put it there and I've said yes do it to the to the software it's still there if I want the rest of it later Okay, so I've got some floral elements on the go. I don't feel the need to have every space filled with them. So now it's a case of how do I want them to be? Do I want to be able to see through them like that? With things that are as bold as that, yes, I will. So all I've done there is I'm on my move tool still and I've just used my number keyboard to reduce my opacity. So if you just look here for me, if I just hit my five key, you know, it will change it to that, you know, 60, that kind of thing. So, oh God, it's done that thing again. I don't know why it's doing that today. It doesn't usually do that. It's misbehaving, misbehaving on me. Uh, and my darker one down there, yes, I'm going to want to reduce the opacity again. So if I hit three, it will change that to 30. If I hit five, it will change it to 50. See, it's doing it now. It's working. I don't know why it wasn't before. And this one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put that in at around 50%. That one's still a bit too bold there. I'm going to change that down to 40. And that one, I'm going to leave that one quite sort of quite there. I think maybe 70% and kind of 
chuck it over there a bit okay so now we're going to double F again and now I'm happy with the flowers that I've got so I can get rid of those now that's my workspace not cluttered otherwise you're constantly trying to find the file that you opened and it can be a nightmare <laughs> I used to do it all the time all right so let's throw in some text elements now I think so what do we have here let's move that up a bit and get that open so I quite like the music sheet part of that so I'm just going to throw that over there from an old book. Um, what else do we have here? I definitely want the top corner of that page. And I think I'm going to have some from there. And what else? What else? Uh, that nice postcard maybe that one and then I just want some kind of solid text there some just nice handwriting text elements to throw in as well uh, maybe that one yeah okay I think that will do for now no it won't I want that <laughs> oh 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 <laughs> Okay, so get my folder out of the way, I'm going to get my main image and just tuck that over here. And again, I'm just going to zoom out on these and just get them to a more manageable preview size. Okay, and then one at a time, I'm going to see what I want from here. So again, I'm going to take my lasso tool. And I'm just going to go around that part that I want and then I am going to command and drag it over to there. Move tool, drag it up out the way, resize it, apply, close that image. This one I know I definitely want the top part um, I'm just going to use my rectangular marquee tool here because I know I want that part. Uh, I'm going to just throw that on a new layer and then I'm going to change the size of that. This is pretty much, it's very formula, this, you know, this part of the collage. That one I may want to steal a bit more so I'm not actually going to close that one yet. This one again, I know I want the um, the music sheet part, so I'm going to drag that over as well. And then again, just resizing, shoving it somewhere, applying it. Don't think I'm going to want the rest of that one. I've still got it, you know, in the folder if I change my mind, but I don't think I will. That one is just quite lovely. So I think we're going to just drag that one over. Now if you find, and this is a great example, if you find something, an element, and it's got that white border around it and you don't want that white border, very easy to fix that. So we'll just reduce the size here and apply that. Then what we're going to do is we are going to take our rectangular marquee tool and be just inside the edges. So it's just, just a little bit, you know, like that. Then we're going to invert the selection, which if you're using your keyboard command is Command Shift I, or select and inverse. And then if you hit your backspace, stroke delete key, that's gone. Brilliant, fabulous. There we go. So there's that. Let's just pop that over there and apply it. And we can definitely get rid of that now. Now again, that's got the same thing, so yeah, I'll do it on the actual image here because a lot of the time the white edges will go away if you change the blend mode anyway, but not always. So it's easier just to get rid. So again, just select, inverse, back. Ah, hold on one second. Sorry, my background layer is locked. So if you have a layer that has that on before you can do this, just take the lock away. And there we go, that gets rid of that. And we'll drag that over here 
and then close that one. And then resize that and apply. And then I had this one, didn't I? And to be fair, I'm just going to drag that over um, and go into my main window to resize this because it is absolutely enormous. I'd forgotten about that. <laughs> it's savagely large. <laughs> So that's the easy way to be able to access all of that. Okay, so we'll get rid of that one now. Uh, I definitely want that overlay, which is quite wonderful. Overlays are fantastic because as you can see, you can just plonk them on top of anything. And that's all you see. You can make overlays, but that's a tutorial for another day. <laughs> But you know what, I think I'm actually, I'm going to just leave it with this for now. I'm going to leave those open in case I want them. But for now, for simplicity's sake, I am just going to, oh, wrong layer. I am just going to move things around a little bit. So that's my music sheet layer. Uh, that is, that, that's my postcard. Okay. Right, so let's mess with this one first and foremost. Now, for this one, I'm probably going to want to put it on a soft light uh, layer, which as you can see there, it just kind of, it almost matches tonally, but it gives you that. You can, of course, if you want to get really fancy, you can go and create a layer and if you hit your alt key uh, Photoshop has taken to this new feature of automatically zooming if you miss the apply so I'm just applying that to this layer only so whatever I do will not affect the rest of my layers that's a clipping adjustment so in here I could just take that saturation down a little bit and it would blend right in you know or you can you can do whatever you want there really. But if I just take that saturation down, it's just gonna blend that in really, really nicely. If you've still got a bit of an edge, you can do like I showed you previously. Put a mask on, take your black brush, and just knock that out slightly. And there's a bit of a hard edge there and there. So we'll just, just soften those off a little bit. Okay, fantastic. That's how we're looking. So now I know that that is done and I'm actually going to just name that so I know that that's laid up and it's dealt with. This one should be this up here. Yeah, fabulous. So now let's again see what we want to do with this one. How I'd like to have this one look. I think I might put that one on a darker one to be fair. Now, as you see, again, that leaves you with an almost transparent background. So you can just put that over the top of other things and it will work a treat. For the purposes of this, I think I might put it across that rose for now. Lovely. So now let's... Uh, that's birdie. We're calling that one birdie because it says it on the thing just here. Birdie darling. <laughs> So I'm going to leave that one there for now. Okay, at this point, and I probably should have done it way earlier, but let's get that saved uh, as a PSD file. And I'm just going to pop that on my desktop for now. It doesn't matter when I name it for now either. It's going to be the only one. But obviously, if you're saving it somewhere specific, make sure you do name it. Okay, let's have a look at this one. So this one is a postcard. So where might we want to put it is the question and how might we want to blend it. You can just choose to change the opacity of these things. You don't actually have to use the blend mode, but you can also use them in conjunction with each other, which is also really nice. So if I was to put that, no, I don't like that. We'll undo that. 
a lot of this does really come down to your personal preferences what you look at it and think I like that that looks nice so you know that's that's the thing here you just have to make it look how you like so I'm just gonna I want to see more of that lace in there so I'm just gonna pop that there I think and yeah I think that's looking quite nice oh Sean's at it again okay so this one is my music sheet now this one I actually want that to be quite you know quite a chunk on the page I think um, I quite like the idea of that one being you know just really quite something um, oh, I hadn't applied that that's why my blend modes aren't changing <laughs> so yeah at this point something like that would be really nice now I know some people do like to keep the hard edges in their collages and obviously you can absolutely do that you know and then you can kind of grab your other ones and you can you know create break off the lines of stuff in sections and yeah absolutely do that if that's the look you want to go for for the purposes of today I'm not I'm making a more blended collage so again I'm just going to apply a mask to that get my brush tool on black and just give that I'm on the wrong layer here completely I'm on that layer because I clicked on it to show you guys ah right okay yeah so let's go back to the music layer shall we and do what I was trying to do <laughs> oh my life I haven't put my mask on see I've made myself laugh so much now that uh, that I'm forgetting things I do amuse myself greatly, you know, and I'm sure a lot of you probably have that figured out by now. So all I'm doing is I've got my brush settings, you know, to be a little bit, a little bit lower. So I'm not just doing a complete wipe. Uh, I'm actually just going to move that one out the way for a moment just so I can see what I'm doing over on this side here so there we go that's kind of blending that's doing what I want it to do it's just a little bit hard along that edge if you've got something that's a bit close to what you want to break down then obviously you can just go in with a smaller brush um, and you can use a higher opacity brush in places to you know kill more of it off make it look a bit patchy around the edges there so it's not quite as just a solid lump you know and you could if you wanted to as well use oh, use your brush on um, a lower opacity setting um, say 30% and you could just knock back sections of this if you wanted to as well you know just to uh, just to make it look a little bit a little bit patchy you know, um, knock it down a bit further maybe and just soften off some little bits soften off some around the rows there we go yeah, and maybe just those edges that are a little bit stark a little bit contrasting okay, yes and I've now decided that on my on this postcard layer uh, I've decided I would like to just knock a little bit of that out because it's just looking a bit harsh for me. So again, I'm on a very low opacity brush and I'm just tickling out the bits that are a little bit severe for me. But as I say, it comes down to your personal preference. It's your collage. You're going to do whatever you want to do with it. But there we go. I'm happier with that now. So back onto my move tool, selecting my layer here. So this is one of the letters. So let's see where we want to put that one. Let's move that out of the way for a minute because I have a feeling that this one's going to end up over here somewhere. So yeah. So I'm going to make it so it kind of it sort of you know collages into the other pieces of it there I think that will look quite nice 
probably leave it at the size that it already is. And I think, let's see, should we go for a luminosity on that one as well? Mm, no, because I don't like the way that that leaves the, uh, the rose behind it. So I think we're either going to have to go for a multiply and lower the opacity of it somewhat. Let's see. Let's see how that looks. If the edge is blended out. Nope, I'm still not happy. Still not happy, so we're going to have it on Ooh, darken. Okay. Yeah, there we go. All right, that's better. So that's currently on 60% opacity on the actual layer. So I'm just going to take that up to 80%. And then I'm going to put my layer mask on. And like before, I'm just going to soften along those edges a bit. And just take out some little, little bits and pieces here and there. And that will just bring it in nicely into the collage. So we're just going to, you see I'm not being careful, I'm just kind of scattering, you know, to just knock out certain little bits and leave other bits a bit more prominent, like that. Okay, so let's have a little look. That's how we're looking so far. That is almost done. This one, my letter overlay, let's put that to uh, letter 2. Um, I find that a little bit harsh, just a little bit stark. So I think I'm going to, again, just lower the opacity down on that to 6 or 7. You know, and, and it just blends in far better, I think, than, you know, than that really. I think that just, it just fits better. So we're going to have it on that. So now it's for our postcard, which I'm actually going to, and here's a tip for you in case you don't know, if you're going to rotate something, it can be tricky if you're trying to get it to a certain point. So if you hold down your shift key, it will rotate it in angles for you. So you know that you've got it straight if that's what you want, uh, which works really well. So I'm going to pop that one over here, I think. I don't want it to be the same height as the music sheet. And obviously you can put it at a jaunty angle if that's what you want to do. Yeah. Um, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> there are no police for collages. Well, at least there shouldn't be. There probably is. Probably somebody out there thinks that, you know, they are going to police collage. Okay, so let's see. So all I've done there is lowered the opacity of that to 50%. And I am going to name that postcard 2. And I'm going to, again, get my layer mask on, get my brush, and again, just soften off those edges. I'm going to just up the opacity of the brush to just do a bit quicker what I'm trying to do. Well, I don't need to be quite as soft with this one, so be a bit more brutal. <laughs> okay, so you see, that's how easy that is to do that so far. Now, I'm going to save that currently. So at that point there, you can leave that. You know, that's a background you can use for anything, really. Um, but I am going to add just some final elements um, as I mentioned before, so my other elements, lace, I'm probably not going to worry too much about lace because I've got some lacy texture in there already, that's fine, I don't really feel like I need to mess with that too much now, um, but I think some butterflies could be nice, um, so let's see what we have here in the way of butterflies, so what do we have? Oh, that's very pink, isn't it? So let's have that little watercolour one there. And I think I will have some from here. Now, you can open PDFs into Photoshop. Um, when you do, it will ask you if you want the pages or the images 
choose the images. Press OK and hey presto, they are all there on a transparent background for you. How fabulous is that? So let's uh, let's get the folder back out of the way because we no longer need that. Okay, so this uh, this standalone butterfly here. Let's see how we feel about. Oh, hit the wrong key there. I meant to hit V. I hit F instead. So let's bring that down in size and see. I think I quite like the idea of it sort of being over here. You know, sort of around this flower. Go a bit. Maybe a little smaller than that. Yeah, I think that looks kind of cute on there. And then I'm just going to, I'm either going to put that on Lighten or I'm going to put it, no, Lighten will get rid of the body. So I'm going to get the, I'm going to get the opacity and just bring it down. 80% is lovely. Yeah, okay. So you see that looks really nice. And then we'll steal a couple of these ones from here that will fit nicely with the sort of colour range as well. So this one down here could be kind of nice. So I'm going to get my uh, lasso tool and I'm just going to make a shape around that one as usual. Double click and it will automatically close that for you. And I'm just going to command and drag it over there. Um, what are, I think one more. I think I'd like to have one more. I think maybe this one here. This little one might be kind of nice. So let's have you as well, sir. Right. Okay, I can already see that that one is going to look really, really sweet around here somewhere. Move that one out of the way for a moment just because it's a distraction. So let's just have that one would be really, really pretty, I think, in there. Let's just click outside and have a look. Yes. So again, let's play with the opacity of that. So again, in case you've forgotten, you're on your move tool. Hit your V key. That will take you to your move tool. And then just use your numeric keypad to just get it to a stage that you like. I think maybe 55 works nicely for that one. Yeah, 55 is good. So we'll leave that one there. And then this one obviously is a sizable beastie, so we could have reduced the size on that one considerably, I think. <laughs> and uh, maybe kind of put that one up here somewhere and just uh, go a little bit bigger, I suppose. And pop you over there. And again, I'm just going to see what looks good. The 70 looks good on that one, I think. Maybe a bit much. I'll tell you what I'm going to do actually. I'm not going to change the opacity anymore. I'm going to do like we did before. I'm going to get a hue saturation layer. I'm going to hold down my Alt key and I'm going to click between the two to link it to this layer only. And I'm going to just take the saturation down a little bit just to kill off that, you know, kind of intensity a little bit so it kind of blends better in the background. So, yeah. So as you can see, you know, I can change that massively and it doesn't affect anything else on the page. It just affects that one because I've linked it. So I'm going to just save that again now. And uh, I would say that that's looking like a pretty nice collage, really. If I was going to change anything now, I might add a little bit of maybe some smaller flower elements in there. Um, just because I find that gap to be just... I don't know, it's drawing my eye to it, which, you know, again, as I say, comes down to the design thing. You know, you're going to look at it at your own one and you're going to know if you want to add something else to it or not. Um, and that's absolutely fine. So I'm thinking maybe a bit of that one would be nice because it's got a butterfly on it anyway. Um, or let me just have a little squint here, or maybe even one of those. Ooh, that one. Okay. Now, if you see my other video about file organisation and um, copyright stuff, I mentioned getting public domain images from uh, museums and stuff, and these are taken as plates 
uh, from one of the museum sites. I'm not entirely sure which one because I haven't marked it when I've moved it across. It came out of a folder. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to... Oh, I haven't got the, wrong, the, right, uh, the right thing there in the background. So yeah, I'm just going to select that and again I'm just going to cut it and drag it over. Um, but yeah, you can download things that you know then you can use commercially, you know, without any problems, um, and you'll be fine. So let's pop that in there, and uh, let's see, let's see here now. Yeah, that could be quite good there. And if we were to just change the opacity of that I don't know maybe over there actually behind that writing would be really nice okay yep so we're going to have that there we're going to put our layer mask on get our black brush and again we're just I'm going to put that in a little bit more of a savage opacity on this one because I really do want that to just kind of be an element behind that text I don't really want it to be a big deal on the page itself it's just gap filler at this point so there we go that's nice yeah okay 60% there we go because you can still see that text behind it and that's nice we've got a nice blend it's taken up that kind of bit that was a bit too much of a gap and I think there's a bit too much of a gap up here as well so we will possibly take some of this one so because again it is from a plate i'm just gonna rectangular marquee the piece i want and drag that over it's probably going to be yeah it's going to be enormous of course it is so we're just gonna free transform that and get it into a much better size okay and then I think I'm going to rotate that one slightly. I'm not sure which. I think I'm going to use the bit with the butterfly because that's kind of cute there. So we will apply that. We're going to mess with the opacity. And again, I'm going to do a saturation layer and link it the same way. Um, and I'm just going to take that down just a bit, not massively, just some. Uh, and then let's just, I think, no, that's going to need to be up this end. Becca, what are you doing? What are you doing? No, we'll just leave the blend mode as is on this occasion as well. So, mask, black brush, get rid of what I don't want. So, I'm going to... Knock it out from the bits that I want to see. And the other thing that you can do, and this is the point, this is another huge part of leaving it on layers, is because if I want it to sit behind something else or in front of something else, I can dictate that in my layer order. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to kind of tickle out the bits that I really, really don't want visible. I'm going to lower the opacity now massively and just feather out the excess parts that are really close to the image. So I don't want them gone completely, but faded is fine. So there we go. So if I wanted that postcard to sit on top of these flowers, I can go ahead and select it and I can just drag it up in my layer order until it sits on top like so so then that will put it behind then on the layer mask for the flower I can just knock that back a little bit because it's a bit savage I don't want to get rid of it completely I just don't want it to be quite so dark so there you go Oh, didn't mean to do that, meant to be here. <laughs> so there is a collage.
in, I don't know, don't actually know how long that's taken, but, you know, it probably took me about 10 minutes to get all the elements together in my, um, in my folder, ready to use, but this way, you're not scrabbling every time you think, oh, I need, oh, I want, you're not going through all your files, you've already done that bit, and you already know the theme you want, the style you want, so you've just picked out those bits, and it makes this all so much, you know, sort of more seamless. You know, um, and as I say, having everything on layers means that you can adjust anything you want to do. And yeah, I did stop naming my layers. I shouldn't have done that really. That would be, you know, top right rows. This would be, you know, bottom right rows, bottom right butterfly, mid left butterfly, centre butterfly. <laughs> yeah, because then you. But if you've got your move tool, more often than not, you can pick them up just by clicking on them. But sometimes. If there's something big around it, it won't necessarily pick it up. So that's why it's always good to have your layers just named anyway. Um, so, yeah, you can move things around. If you decide now that, you know, or oh, actually that music page, that could really just do with being sort of, you know, shunted around a bit, a bit less, a bit more. Well, you can do that. You know, that's that's the beauty of layers. So think of it as sheets of paper and think of, you know, so you're taking pieces of a piece of paper and you're layering it on top, just like an actual collage. It's exactly the same, but with the beauty of being able to manipulate it further and, you know, think of the masks as the bit that you're cutting out, basically. <laughs> so because another way that you can uh, absolutely do uh, use masks as well is if you have a piece here and if I just take this I'll make sure that my foreground colour is black if I hold down my alt and my backspace key it will make it disappear that's because that mask is on if I take the mask away so if I was to then use my white paintbrush instead I could just paint parts of it back in if I just wanted little bits, I could pick them out, you see. So that is why layer masks are incredible. Because I could just bring that in around that rose, you know. I could do whatever I wanted to do. So, you know, that's uh, basically how masks work. Um, it's like having a sort of clear piece of something over the top, you know, and you can just kind of manipulate it that way so there you go um i'm just going to take that back down there we go right i'm done i'm out of here <laughs> i i i really really hope that that's, that you've been able to follow this i do really try to uh dial it back when you do it for a living uh you forget that not everybody can do it from muscle memory the way that you can um, and so a lot of people make tutorials and they move too quickly and they don't explain what they're doing they're just hitting buttons things like that you know which is very confusing very difficult to follow and I really have tried to avoid doing that because yes it's the way that I work if I'm doing it for myself but if you're teaching you know so please do give me some feedback here is what I'm saying really I suppose is that you know I kind of need to know whether or not you guys are finding this easy to follow if you need further explanation on something you know just tell me in the comments or if finally you feel confident enough to do it because you've watched this tutorial again please I'd love to know and I'd love to see what you create you know if you if you're on the Facebook groups and things like that that we're in together you know feel free to tag me in a post or come onto my group which is the uh, So Darn Twisted Free Printables uh, and Junk Journal uh, group. There's a page as well for So Darn Twisted, you know, come and, and just post your pictures on there. That's absolutely fine. I'm not precious. Show me what you've made. Um, and obviously if you have found it useful, a thumbs up is really appreciated because it keeps me relevant in your feed. Uh, what else do I need to say to you before I go? Oh, it's all exciting. Um, I now have a coffee page as well, which is uh, obviously coffee, and it, my username on there is so darn twisted. So I'm currently loading all of my free printables on there a little bit at a time 
please do feel free. The link will be in the description. Go and help yourselves to my free printables. And if you find my tutorials and printables helpful, there is the option to buy me a coffee. But it's not any obligation whatsoever. I do it because I want to do it. So, you know, don't feel obligated, but it is appreciated. So I think that's everything for now, guys. As I say, links to relevant things will be in the descriptions for you. Um, and enjoy creating. Have fun, guys, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.